I absolutely love the winter solstice. Before I even knew what the winter solstice was, I was drawn to candles and campfires and twinkling lights on trees and curling up in front of a fireplace with a good book in the winter months when it was cold outside. When I found out that solstice is basically a holiday embracing all of that, I knew I had found my own special holiday. And I love it even more because solstice is science. Solstice is nature. It is literally the day when, because of the Earth, how it's situated on the rotation of its axis, it is the longest amount of darkness of the year and the shortest amount of daylight. Every day after today, we'll get a smidge more daylight, and exactly six months from now, we will reach the summer solstice, and it becomes the opposite. There's not a book telling us that, or a prophet, or somebody on the news, or a spiritual leader. We can observe it with our own eyes, our own bodies. It's science and it's nature. My reason side gets and understands the solstice. What I love about the earth-based and pagan traditions is that there is an equal embracing of the light and the dark in our cycles of earth, in nature, and in our lives. Because we take our cues from the earth, which has that same equal balance, there is half light, half dark. It switches at certain points of the year, it's balanced at certain points of the year. That's how it works. It's natural. And I want to be really clear when I'm talking here about light and dark, and that light does not mean good, and dark does not mean bad. We have been fooled by culture, and this has been weaponized against our people of color too many times. We were taught in the wild, wild west, if you look at the movies, you saw a black hat, you knew what that meant. You saw a white hat, you knew what that meant. And that is not fair to any of us. And it creates binaries that aren't real. So I want to make sure that we don't fall into the trap of talking about darkness and saying that's bad, nor lightness and saying it's good. The whole point of the solstice is that we are honoring both of them, and they do not extend to societally contrived uh, feelings about race, or have, nor should we put them on like that ever. There is no coincidence that solstice happens around Christmas. The early Christians did this quite intentionally See, when they were trying to convert the pagans, the pagans held on pretty tightly to their winter, winter solstice traditions because science. Like, it, the time came of the year where it was the longest night of the year and they celebrated. They could not take that away from them. So instead, they just kind of transitioned it. So. Even though we know from history that Jesus was likely born in March, because after all, Joseph was traveling to his homeland for the census, which we knew from history was in the spring, the early Christians placed Christmas right next to the solstice. All the lights on the trees, pagan. Christmas Eve with candles and singing, Yep, earth-based. The Yule log on the fireplace, totally. And the birth of the sun, S-O-N, at the same time as the rebirth of the sun, S-U-N, not a coincidence. So it's important that we embrace it. 
Here are some thoughts of what you can do to embrace this time of year in your own lives. Honor the dark. It is time to be done with our work a little bit earlier in the day, to curl up around the fire or the TV or a good book just a little bit earlier. The cold, it is colder here, it's relative. <laughs> I, hear us, I hear us complain and I think of how cold it is in other places. And, but we still, we deserve our blankets, our fires, our electric blanket, our snuggly sweaters, our fuzzy boots, a warm beverage. Warm your soul from the cold that surrounds you. You can embrace the darkness in our lives. This is the opportunity where we can look at the challenges, the troubles in our lives, and honor what they have taught us. Dare I even say celebrate what they have taught us. We don't need to pretend that everything is perfect and happiness. The earth is giving us permission to balance the darkness and the lightness and to honor that. And it is also a time to acknowledge the challenges in our world, the division that we are seeing all over right now, what is happening in the news, the oppression of so many people, the grabs for power, the light, lack of rights for so many. Please don't rush to just sweep that under the rug and discount it. This is the time when we can look at it, turn it over, see what it means for our lives, really examine it, and see what it has to teach you as you sit with it. Because there will be the return of more daylight, the light does return. We can embrace the dark for a little bit because we know the light will be returning. Every year we think, oh my gosh, will this darkness go on forever? And we know it doesn't. We know that it will return. We know that we will not be left contemplating the dark for too long because after today, the days will get a little bit longer each day, and that the lightness will return also to the world and our lives. Now, the lightness in our lives and in our world and in our news don't necessarily correspond perfectly with this natural rhythm of the sun, but it is a reminder that in the earth, the light is balanced with the dark, and the dark will come, but so will the light. So here is my winter solstice blessing for you. May you find some time for some quiet in the dark, in the candlelight with a fire, or maybe a cozy chair. May you reflect on the darkness of your life, understanding how it has shaped you and helped you grow in both your experiences and also your empathy for others. May you embrace the challenges while knowing that the light is returning, knowing that each day gets brighter and brighter, just as we know there is more kindness, love, and hope in our world that can grow in our own hearts and in our actions. So might it be. So we're going to have a ritual of celebrating the, what we are letting go of and what are we are bringing in at this turning of the wheel. Many people reflect on what they're letting go of and inviting in at New Year's. All of these holidays happen at the same time. So while our calendar is actually changing on December 31st, today is the day that we actually are turning on the earth. So let's do it today. When you walked in, hopefully you received a piece of flash paper. If anyone needs one, please raise your hand and an usher can bring it to you. We invite you 
to write a word of something that you want to let go of in this darkness of this time. It can be a thing, a feeling, a situation, whatever feels appropriate for you. And during our ritual time that comes next, there are four different stations corresponding with the east, the south, the west, and the north. And you can go to, and you will burn your flash paper. It burns quickly. They will help you. It's very cathartic. You will enjoy it, I believe. Hold it to the edge of the candle, and it will burn quickly and release what you want to let go of. And then there will be cards at the table as well. They will hand you a card, and on that you can write what your intention is, what you wish for for the turning of the new year. You can keep them with them, you as a reminder. Now, with sacredness and the spirit of the solstice, we invite you to our ritual of release and intention. If anyone needs us to bring a candle to you, let us know. We would be glad to do that. Let's celebrate together. Our closing words are by Gregory Jones. On this, the longest night of the year, we are warmed by the certain knowledge that tomorrow will welcome more light than today. As it has for eons, for billions of years, the coming of light brings life. May we be awed by the great miracles of light and life and faithfully nurture the mystery and magic of wonder. May it be so, blessed be.